welcome everybody, all friends, uh, colleagues, and uh, all participants. Uh, we hope that our session today from the mean Middle East and North Africa will be fruitful for us as uh, healthcare givers and diabetic food professionals. We are a committed team. And also I hope it will be beneficial for our patients throughout the MENA region from Asia to Africa to North Africa. Uh, we divided the program into two parts, two main parts after the introductory uh, video. The first part will be from the uh, region where we have a high prevalence of diabetes. And then we will go to the middle and low prevalence of diabetes regions. And at the end, we will have a question for the panelists and uh, a, a small discussion about uh, the validity of the statistics in our Middle East and North Africa. My name is Dr. Vijay Vishwanathan, the president of DFOOT International based in Belgium. On behalf of the board of DFOOT International, I would like to welcome all of you to this flagship project of DFOOT International, which is the Diabetic Foot Awareness Week 2022. I would like to thank the regional council members and the board members for making this successful each year from 2020 onwards. We have seven regions of the, of the DFOOT International with the Saka region, NAC region, Africa, MENA region, Southeast Asia region and Western Pacific region. And we have allocated one day for each region from November 7th to November 14th, 2022. I hope this program will be useful to you and will enrich your knowledge about preventive diabetic foot care. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, dear president, for your kind words and uh, wishes for the Middle East and North Africa. We also appreciate all your work and activity, uh, yourself and the board, towards establishing uh, the, not only the Awareness Week, but also uh, reinforcing the website of DFOOT, the YouTube channel, and all the educational activities that you are leading. We are really proud of you and we are really proud of all the board members and wish the best to all the mankind, uh, especially the diabetic population in this world. So uh, for the sake of the time, we move directly to the session number one. Uh, this session uh, will be chaired by Dr. Maria Butros, the Vice President of DFOOT International and Dr. William Akiki from Lebanon. Dr. Miriam and Dr. William, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hallaby. Uh, everyone, uh, welcome to the MENA region session. Uh, and I'm happy to be here to co-host uh, the first session with my colleague, Dr. Akiki. And I turn it over to Dr. Akiki. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here and to attend this seminar. Uh, it will be for the next time very good to see you in person. And then hopefully with the, the COVID going out and then we can meet again in person and then to remember the old good times. So I, uh, I have the pleasure to invite our dear friend, Dr. Zaid Mian from Pakistan to present uh, his lecture about the prevalence of diabetes and the of diabetes and diabetic foot management in Pakistan. Please, uh, dear Zaid, we are all listening to your lovely speech. Thank you, Kiki. And uh, I'm sharing uh, my presentation. Uh, So uh, the diabetic foot uh, standard of care, and we are talking about the saving link in Pakistan. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and the 
the board member for having a, such a lovely session uh, all over the globe uh, regarding the the foot uh, uh, diabetes in, uh, in 2000, uh, about 8.8 .8 million people were diabetics. And that number was jumped up to 33 million people in 2021. So huge and enormous increase in the number of diabetics in Pakistan. And if you look at the, uh, the top 10 countries, then the Pakistan is placed as at uh, number third uh, on the top 10 countries uh, with the 33 uh, million pupils. And as this is by the Gus and Nal 2017, is the, as the number of people with uh, diabetes are increasing worldwide, and therefore the demand for the diabetic food services is increasing all over the world. And so in Pakistan, we are, and as a DFOOD International, as a previous board member and vice president, and as a, a DFOOD fraternity, uh, we're trying to implement and develop sustainable food care services, not only in the country, but also in the, those regions of the globe where these services are, are not present. And in Pakistan, the three million people having diabetic food ulcer. This is about 10% of the, uh, the prevalence uh, rate. And uh, it is not the number only, but if you look at the, the cost of treating a diabetic food ulcer, which also matter. And this is the paper which published, we published in 2005 that the, uh, a, by the, the cost of treating a simple diabetic foot ulcer, a 1A or 1B or a 2A, 2B ulcer was enormous. And, and, and now when we compare this, uh, the cost from 2005 to in, in 2021, this cost is increasing by, by huge increase in the number of, of the, uh, uh, in the cost. Uh, in terms of treatment, that this is the direct cost, and about five-fold increase in the uh, in the cost, the direct cost of the treating diabetic foot ulcer. So it is not only the number, but the cost of treating diabetic foot also increases. And I believe this is not only in Pakistan, but entire globe. And uh, with this. Uh, uh, increasing number of foot uh, wounds and ulcer. And we have uh, shown this, this association of the mental health that the, every second patient with a diabetic foot ulcer was found to have depressive symptoms and which affect also the social life of the patient as well. And then uh, talking about the amputation rate, which is the uh, the uh, one of the end uh, one of the end result of uh, uh, amputation uh, of the having an ulcer. So we in 1997 when we started our services, we are st having a 27 percent of uh, more than 27 percent amputation rate, uh, and then with the uh, with the uh, when we then we started. And this comes down to 10.4 in uh, 2006 and uh, uh, four. And when then that is the period when we started this step-by-step -step program in Pakistan and, and the Anna knows about uh, very well about the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, 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 foot project in the different part of the world. So this is one of the project which changed the entire, uh, the entire phase of the WD foot treatment in our country, and that comes down to about about eight point three percent in during that period. And then we have a a multidisciplinary approach and the training of the people, uh, the the podiatrists and the doctors and the physician who are dealing with diabetic foot. And now uh, we are having uh, this is 
2016 3.9% amputation rate in our centers. And if you look at this, uh, this graph again, and the chart on the, on the, on the right side of the, uh, your screen, then you can see that the number, these number decreases, the min major amputation and the minor amputations. So we started a, a, a minor amputation from 17% and a major amputation from 10%. And then the numbers uh, goes down uh, as well. And you can see the, the major amputation was 1.4% now, and the most of the burden is taken by the minor amputations. So that's how we, we, we uh, have our journey during these 20 years in terms of amputations rates. And this is the number of the diabetic foot, peripheral diabetic foot clinic in the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, program, uh, 150 diabetic foot clinic, where the amputation rate was halved. And what treatment and what management we are, we are using and the guideline, and this is the standard of care, uh, 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 IWGDF guidelines we are using uh, uh, since, uh, since ages now. And, uh, and in this guideline, we all know that the principle of, of treatment are, are the five principles of treatment, the local wound care, where the pediatric and wound care and the dressing, and then the offloading and the treatment of infection, restoration of the tissue perforation, and of course, the metabolic control and the treatment of other comorbidity, all have got their importance. So for, for treating such an enormous number of diabetics and the burden of diabetic foot in Pakistan, we thought that we need to, uh, we need to train our 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 uh, uh, our our physician, uh, and uh, then sorry, uh, I missed it. So uh, what we have uh, 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 trained the people in uh, diabetic foot, and we are using this this uh, uh, the classification. We 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 know that uh, everyone uh, one knows that. Uh, the classification help in predicting the outcome of, of the diabetic foot ulcer. And this is this is was, was work which was done in 2006, which compare the uh, the the UT classification and Wagner classification uh, in terms of outcome. And then uh, in 2008 we use the Sinbad classification system uh, to compare the outcome of the foot ulcer. And we, we understand that, that, that the Sinbad classification has got the six by eight validation point, and it is uh, more easier to understand uh, for, for the uh, general uh, physician and the treating physician, and they, uh, they can make a referral prone plan according to, to this classification as well. And so for, for, for dealing such a great problem, and as the IWGDF guideline says, the examination and the assessment of the ulcer should be done by the trained healthcare professional. And so what we did, we started to having a diploma in diabetes in, in 1999 and about uh, 448 general physician and the family physician are, uh, are, uh, were trained uh, in, in diabetes so that they can, uh, can implement the standard of care in terms of diabetes and not in terms of diabetes, but also in terms of diabetic foot care. And we understand that there is a lack of, of uh, podiatrist facilities all over the world, which is told by the, uh, this is what uh, by the, uh, the Suri Turley in 2009. And this, uh, uh, this was uh, again understand by, by the ID, IDF and IWGDF. So in countries where, where the, uh, the podiatric services are not there, a diabetic foot care education program was given by the IDF and IWGDF. And we have run this program uh, uh, for six weeks to train the diabetic foot care assistant. And we have trained up till now 150 for 
diabetic foot care assistant who are helping the patient uh, uh, and in maintaining the standard of care in terms of diabetic foot and all across the Pakistan. And then we, we, we uh, train our, uh, the, the physician who are taking an interest in diabetic foot care during the practice. They are, they are uh, the certified diabetic foot training course or three months, uh, uh, three month course, and we are uh, we have trained uh, our 150 healthcare professional in in treating and management and preventing the diabetic foot uh, and maintaining the standard of care. And uh, then we have we we develop a national diabetes foot advisory board. We met every Wednesday. 9 a.m. early mo in the morning, uh, having a virtu virtual meeting uh, from all countries, all towns of the Pakistan. Uh, we connect from each other and we discuss uh, the case uh, cases and management. And these are the some example. And you can see over here in the Islamabad. This is case from the Islamabad, one of the uh, the city from the Pakistan in the northern part, a non-healing ulcer with the victor osteomyelitis, and which uh, wound was healed in the six weeks time. And then this was uh, the the in other city of the Pakistan, uh, Pakistan advised the BK and then treated and uh, and this is all discussion was made on the on the the, the virtual uh, case based discussion was made and the treatment was was carried out by the, by the treating physician also over there. And so we saved many, many of, of the, uh, the amputation in the different parts of, of the Pakistan. This is again in the Rawalpindi and Jamshuru, different city in Islamabad, the Multan. The, these are the far-flung areas from, from in, in the different part of the countries. And, uh, and then we, we, uh, we uh, started a home, a home visit by the diabetic foot care assistant for daily dressing. And that, that is a home domestically uh, daily dressing and which would need to be done uh, in every, every patient. Uh, and and, uh, and they, then these, these diabetic foot care assistant can, can, uh, can take the, uh, the advice from the consultant uh, uh, who, who is uh, treating these uh, diabetic foot uh, on online on WhatsApp, and and so they can help uh, the patient uh, and and the management and maintain the standard of care. And this uh, there is an uh, opportunity for for the patient as well, and the patient can also uh, uh, by by the telemedicine can contact the, the DFCA and the consultant as well uh, on, on the WhatsApp or, or the other, uh, the, uh, the media, and uh, they can take the advice. And if they feel uh, they can come uh, uh, to the clinic as well. So, so uh, decreasing the number of unnecessary amputations and, and regarding the offloading uh, techniques, uh, we, are, we are using this, uh, uh, the, the gold standard, uh, uh, offloading technique, the total contact cost, as well as these non-removable and removable offloading devices in Pakistan. And this, this is one of the paper which we, we have published in 2012, which showing that the locally made offloading techniques uh, and comparing the modified uh, footwear and the scotch cost boot and the modified plaster of periscar Paris cast in in a diabetic plantar foot, non-infected plantar foot ulcer, and you can see over here that the 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 healing time there is no significant difference in the healing time, but the different there was a significant difference in the cost. So the the modified with mod, uh, footwear uh, or the sandal, which are more commonly uh, wear. Uh, in use in, in, in this uh, part of the world, in the, the Pakistan, Bangladesh, and in, in India, and uh, perhaps in the Sri Lanka as well. Uh, so the costs uh, do matter in, in this uh, uh, part of the world, and the cost uh, showing the, that they, we have 
the no difference in the healing rate the cost is significantly different and then what about the the patient who are not having an ulcer but they they having at having a feet at risk. And this is the data about the 18,000 people who are having, uh, uh, of, of the uh, people with diabetes uh, and they are having feet at risk. Uh, and you can see over here that about 90% of them uh, are uh, not aware to, to use uh, the proper footwear. And about 60% of them uh, uh, are, are having a barefoot walking. So, we started this uh, this project, which is uh, called the Footwear for Every Diabetic with the W World Diabetics Fed, uh, and 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 this we uh, we started a, a risk assessment clinic as well as uh, the created focus awareness on the diabetic foot care and the footwear as well. And uh, the training, we, we, we pick up the, the seat cobbler and we train the, these cobblers and, and foot care assistant uh, from these, each center in the foot care manufacturing. And this is the training by, uh, done by the, Ben Nelson from the Denmark. And, and, these, uh, and, and then we manufacture these standardized, low cost and the uh, durable and the most importantly, the acceptable footwear uh, uh, in our country. And uh, this data was uh, presented in WHO as well in the great uh, consultation meeting and as well as in DFCCon in 2019. And this is the data and these, these are the two group of uh, the people who are using the, the, these uh, footwear. One is at risk about uh, 100, 136,000 uh, people who are at risk and with the foot ulcer, uh, 114,500 uh, uh, people who are with the foot ulcer group. And you can see the result, the at risk paper, uh, people, only 3.7% people developed the first or the recurrent foot ulcer uh, during this, this, uh, uh, this project time. And, and similarly, those who, who uh, were having the foot ulcer uh, using with uh, these footwear, a complete recovery uh, uh, the, in 74% of the people as compared to those who are not used them, these footwear. Uh, uh, so so this, the footwear for every diabetics protect the feet across the Pakistan. This was uh, by the World Diabetes Foundation. Uh, and regarding the one, we, one of the important uh, aspect of uh, uh, which lead to amputation in, in, in this part of the, uh, of the world is the infection. And uh, the more than half of the, of the diabetic foot ulcer are clinically infected at the time of presentation. This is the, uh, the international data. But in, uh, in Pakistan, about 78% of the people who presented with, uh, in our foot, uh, foot clinic uh, having a foot ulcer, with the 40% of them having diabetic foot osteomyelitis. And as this is the data from Chennai by Vijay, which we're showing that the infection is the leading cause or real reason for amputation in this part of the world. And, and we have shown this data, uh, similar data, uh, 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 that the infection uh, in each grade of uh, UT grade infection is the leading uh, uh, cause of, of the amputation in in Pakistan as well, and about 82% of the cases, uh, the, the infection is the cause of amputation. And we are using these IWGDF and IDSA guidelines uh, for, for classification of uh, this ulcer. And I'm not going into the detail of this uh, this uh, this uh, this classification, but this mild, moderate, and severe, and one, two, and three, and uh, and four according to IWGDF classification. And why we are classifying the these these uh, 
this infection because they have got prognostic value and uh, and this is the data which uh, 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 which is uh, uh, showing that that the about more than 50% of the moderate and infection and about uh, more than 70% of the severe infection needs hospitalization and amputations, uh, some sort of amputation. Uh, so it is important to classify and treat uh, the infection, uh, timely treat the infection. And uh, it is also important to know the, the, uh, the, the microbiological pattern Uh, and the sensitivity and resistant pattern of of your enough there is enough mdr and uh, an mrsa which presented to us uh, and there are various reasons for this and one of them is of course the the inadvert use of antibiotic not the pro not the proper dose and not uh, the 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 duration of the uh, the antibiotics and Thank you, this Dr. is one of the, uh, the paper which is uh, Dr. Hazid, this is excellent work. Thank you so much. I think that there is a question in the audience and are we able to wrap up uh, in one minute uh, your talk at this point? Okay. So uh, uh, so the uh, uh, so in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, ischemia, and this is our data again, uh, the the uh, the foot ulcer, the amputations. Uh, this is the angi angioplasty which we have done in our center as well. So delay in referral is is leading to high amputation rate, and then my dear friends, and this is reported in in nineteen. Uh, 91 and it is still there a uh, delay in and referral and is one of the tech program is one of the the uh, uh, the, uh, the program which uh, uh, the management and the referral based on the severity of the patients and we and the effectiveness of this fast track program has been shown uh, uh, in the recent paper and so we started a fast track program in Pakistan uh, in collaboration with the DFOOT International and Saving Ling in Pakistan and, and the Bakai Institute of Diabetology and in the Chronology and Bakai University to the, with the aim of reduce uh, an avoidable amputation in Pakistan and with an objective of for the standard of care, foot care uh, to the people with diabetes within or closer to their own vicinity. And we are making connection with the primary and the secondary and tertiary care and then they can the patient can refer back to to their primary or secondary care where where the patient comes from and we are now uh, have been uh, able to develop about 118 uh, uh, connection between the the primary secondary and tertiary care in pakistan and the data is collected uh, is is started to collect it in this mobile app and this is the last two, three slides. The roadmap to the, 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 the standard of care looks very simple, but my dear friends and colleagues, the, it, it requires a team training, uh, a data collection, and a referral, strong referral system to have a, a standard of care. Some late breaking news that the, the, this is the latest news, the two days back, the Diabetes Registry of Pakistan has been officially announced by the exit director of the National Institute of Health in Pakistan. And in this diabetes registry, we, we also have a diabetic foot registry in Pakistan. And this is the last slide. And my dear friends and colleagues, uh, uh, this is the paper which we have published in 2019. And looking at this paper, the, the conclusion uh, and the foot uh, practice in Pakistan, uh, 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 where to, do we stand still? Uh, we are where how? So the uh, the uh, the knowledge and the practice of foot care were found to be unsatisfactory in the most of the patient. This is 2019. So how long we are working? We are still, I think, 
we 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 uh, I I think my my work is not yet done, and we need to do a lot of work. It need to be done, uh, and it's a team works, and not uh, a lot of work need to be done in the region as well. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Zahid. We will take questions at the very end of uh, the program, but excellent work. Thank you for showcasing the, the wealth of knowledge. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Uh, Khaled Idris at this point to start his talk. Okay, I'm going to put a timer for myself and please let me know when I have five minutes to go. Um, I would like to thank everybody who is working on this uh, program, especially Dr. Halabi. You've done a great job in making sure that we are in line. It's going to be very difficult talking after uh, Dr. Mian and with everything that they have done. It makes us look um, very poor. Uh, and it, but it's, it still is interesting that after all the great work they have done, still they say that the satisfaction is low. Uh, I think Pakistan is way ahead of many, many countries in the MENA region and more ahead of maybe even a lot of Western countries. The number of diabetic foot clinics and, uh, and, and all the great work that you have done, Dr. Zahid, is, I mean, all the respect to you. I wish we can do, uh, we can take Pakistan as an example in the Gulf region. We're going to listen to um, uh, the other countries, but I'm going to report on Saudi Arabia and what we have been doing. Uh, so, it kind of makes me sad to do this after Zahid. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna first go talk about the prevalence of diabetes, then we're gonna talk about some statistics and then care. So, wait a second. So in Saudi Arabia, the population right now, this is the latest numbers, we're 36 million. Uh, and the diabetic patients over the age of 25 are 4.5 million, almost the population of Pakistan. Uh, sorry, the population of Lebanon. Whereas the diabetic population of Pakistan is our entire population in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia ranks the fourth, ranks the fourth highest in the world for the rate of diabetes when you adjust for the population. Pakistan, I think, is number two, and we are number four. So when we adjust for population size, then we rank very high in the world. It always bring it, it brings this to my to, to, to my thoughts is we are thinking that in the Gulf region, in the Gulf region. The reason we have so much diabetes is because of petroleum. Our, our, my grandfather used to live on nothing and walking the deserts all the time. And suddenly we have the petroleum, we have the wealth and people started making money and people started becoming fat and not moving. But then when it comes to Pakistan, I don't know what was the, the, the change that caused so many people to be diabetic, is it the same thing as, as uh, modernity, being modern and maybe fast food and bad uh, eating habits? So perhaps maybe I should take it easy on our petroleum because I always blame it for our problem with diabetes. Uh, an estimated 15% prevalence of ulcers. And this is, you know, if we don't have official papers, I have been working for the last two years on documents, I'm writing several papers as we go, as we talk now. I'm going to re finally have official numbers on the prevalence of, uh, of ulcers in diabetic patients. I'm gonna have numbers on the prevalence of amputation, major and minor amputations. And I have some very exciting numbers that I will be sharing hopefully with the world in the next year. But if we take a prevalence of 15%, uh, then that's 675,000 ulcerated patients. If we do it the other way around, we take 15% uh, of the neuropathic patients. You see guys, what I'm doing is I'm trying to come up with, with numbers because there are no actual uh, numbers. If we say that half of the diabetics have neuropathy and 15% of the, of, of the neuropathic patients have ulcers, then I come up with a number of 300,000. I've been trying, I, I serve on several government uh, committees for diabetes and diabetic foot, and I've been trying to convince them of their numbers, and they don't seem yet to believe me, and I, maybe I'm not screaming enough. 
Estimated number of minor and major amputations is 30 to 40,000 amputations per year. Interestingly, maybe five years ago, um, the Minister of Health, the Saudi Minister of Health came out and he said uh, in, 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 in a press release that we have 6,000 amputations per year. So I was very fast right after that in the same, in the same newspaper to tell them that it's actually 30 to 40,000. I hope I don't get in trouble for revealing these numbers, but this is reality. What about services? Uh, Dr. Uh, Mian really impressed us with the services that they are doing in, in Pakistan with perhaps much less, um, much less uh, available funds than, than, than Saudi Arabia. That's just a co common knowledge. Maybe it's, it's teamwork. I have not been able to put around me enough team and enough support to do what they have done in Pakistan or maybe in other countries. So as we stand today, and I say this, part of me is proud and the other part is sad that to date in Saudi Arabia, the number one uh, center is my center and it's a private center. So not everybody can come to me and it costs a lot of money, not because I want to take a lot of money, it's because it costs a lot of money between hospitals, between angioplasty, between debridements, between surgeries, it costs a lot of money. So as we talk now, my center where we are 10 doctors now, we are, we are the, the team. We have endocrinologists, vascular surgeon, infectious disease, podiatric surgeons, podiatrists. We are all the team. And that's why um, we, 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 we are the leading center in the country. Now, the Ministry of Health about uh, 15 years ago created 21, maybe 22 now, one more opening diabetes centers in different areas of the country. And each one of those have uh, ha has in it a diabetic foot clinic or diabetic foot room or two. We have trained close to 300 people, me personally, over the last 15 years. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the system in the Ministry of Health, the hierarchy system, is, is, it has been working against us because you train somebody, they, are, they become a great diabetic foot nurse, and then they get, uh, they get a promotion, so they go somewhere else, and then we lose them. As we talk today, I don't think we have in the whole country more than 10 or 15 actually working diabetic foot nurses in their fields in these centers after we've had close to 300. So it's, it's very sad. We have 286 Ministry of Health hospitals. Most of these hospitals have diabetic foot rooms in them. Some of them might even try to have a diabetic foot team, but usually the diabetics, the diabetics go to the emergency room and you know who goes to the emergency room to see them are the residents and the medical students and they train on them for amputations, which has been the case for the last, I don't know, 50 years and it is very sad. It is continuing to be sad. There's 164 uh, private hospitals. Some of the private hospitals have good diabetic foot programs because it is easier to put a team together in a private hospital, but then the vast majority of the population maybe cannot go to the private hospital. National Guard, 23 hospitals, Ministry of Defense, 25 hospitals. I mean, this just shows you how many hospitals we have. And these are good hospitals. These are not bad hospitals. These are great hospitals. The, what is not really working is the diabetic foot service. And very few of them have a, 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 a team. National Guard Hospital in Riyadh has a team. But that's just one. In, in, in Taif, no team. Most of them have no teams. So I wanted to show you how you can have great medical services, but it doesn't mean that your diabetics, diabetics feet are gonna get treated well. So here's, here's uh, something that I presented previously when we met, where was our last meeting in uh, Abu Dhabi, I think. So this is just a general idea of what I think we can do worldwide and definitely in Saudi Arabia. We can, um, uh, we, we need changing the definition. And I've, I've been preaching this guys for the last 15 years. I want to change the definition of the diabetic foot. The diabetic foot is not the definition that's in the books of the International Working Group, International Working Group on the Diabetic Foot or in the World Health Organization. The diabetic foot is simply the foot of a human being who has diabetes. Simple as that. Why should we wait until the foot of this person who's diabetic 
becomes infected or has an ulcer or has vascular diseases or have neuropathy. From day one of diagnosis, it's a diabetic foot. Then we are going to treat it as such. We're going to classify it and put the patient in a, um, uh, in a, in a care program where he's going to be examined at least once a year or twice a year, depending on his risk management classification, which we have been preaching. So in order to do the risk management classification, we must change the de definition of the diabetic foot. Number two, we need good diabetic control, the diabetes control and early detection of foot complications. How are we going to detect early, uh, early detection of complications if we wait to call it a diabetic foot until it is infected and has no blood supply in it? This is another reason why we should change the definition. Screening and appropriate education. I don't think I have been able in, in, my, in my 20 years of practice yet to convince the endocrinologist and the diabetologist to please examine the feet of patients. You have to tell them to examine it. Maybe if we change the definition, then they will start to treat the patient and actually examine their feet. Number four is adopting the International Working Group on the Diabetic Foot Guidelines. I congratulate Pakistan for adopting these guidelines and it looks like it works. And you are way on your way, way on the way to fighting this disease and you've adopted these guidelines. We are still, we have, we're, we're, we have adopted, adopted them in my clinic, but then how many patients do we see compared to 4 million in the country? Establishing qualified treatment teams and utilizing scientifically proving, proven methods. We still fight with doctors prescribing traditional remedies. I will publish a paper, hopefully in the next couple of months, showing that 14% of the patients in a cohort of 4,000 patients were told by a medical doctor to put mir, you know, or to put sabr, or to put honey from the supermarket on their wounds. That means that that's a big disaster. We're going, to, we're going to report on that. So we need scientifically proven methods. So our fight is not just the patients. Our fight is the doctors as well. Uh, establishing uh, a worldwide registry. Five minutes? Great, I'm almost Five there. minutes, yes. Establishing a worldwide registry. Congratulations to Pakistan, and I'm sure some other countries have a national registry. Saudi Arabia, uh, on the committee that I'm serving, we will probably launch a national registry for diabetes in the next year. What we need as, as the DFOOT International is to establish or help countries or help the World Health Organization to establish a worldwide registry, no longer just a national registry. Finally, we need to invest more in scientific research. Not many, not many um, donations are coming to research in diabetics' feet. The only time there is research is if there is a product and there is profit behind it. Universities don't get funds. Uh, research centers don't get funds. Somehow the diabetic foot is not uh, up high when it comes to funding for uh, research. And that's the end. Under the time. This way I can compensate for Zahid. Thank you, dear Khalid, for respecting the time and being early. And um, we all appreciate the great work you're trying to do in your country. And I personally know how much it's difficult for you to deal with the national authorities. Yeah. And then to how much it is hard to make them accept the new guidelines and then to accept to establish in a, a podiatry approval or either any other uh, certification or national uh, guidelines for the diabetic foot. So now uh, the floor is open for your questions. Please attend these. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. And then this is Mr. Muhammad uh, Nashwiya, please. Uh, you can ask your question. You have to unmute, Muhammad. Maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. If any of the panelists can have any questions or com comments. I, I have a question for Zahed. Obviously, I'm very impressed with what he's done. I'm thinking of, of coming to work for you in Pakistan. Um, You're welcome. 
having having established 152 centers and trained so many people do you think you're starting to tackle the problem i see i know that you have decreased the number of amputations in the centers but i i i want to decrease diabetic foot disease altogether so we don't have to reach to uh, amputation or ulceration are you doing any work on prevention actually yeah yeah you are talking about thank you khalid for your kind words and and the encouraging remarks uh, i know that we are doing uh, when we are in the mena region or as a globe we are uh, working as a team and we learn from each other and these are all the things which we learn from each other and and of course you are talking about the preventing diabetic foot and what we have learned that the uh, is, data is under publication what we have shown that the diabetic foot footwear can prevent the recurrence of ulcer which is uh, shown by the uh, the Seiko Bass and, and the colleague as well and there is a some scary scary data regarding the the occurrence of the first ulcer so this will be a the the new point uh, that what, what we have done in Pakistan with the diabetic foot uh, 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 footwear uh, project that uh, that we may be able to to uh, uh, to decrease the number of uh, of uh, developing a new ulcer in those who are having a high risk or a moderate risk, not a very low risk or probable. So yes, uh, there is a lot of work need to be done, uh, and I I believe that if we can replicate uh, uh, this this project to some uh, other MENA region, and now we are going to have a uh, as I discuss in my my talk regarding the the uh, the other project we are we are going to have in pakistan the fast track project which is uh, you know that the, there is a problem in the referral system in the, all over the uh, all uh, all over the group and in uh, in as well as in the MENA region so if the if the primary care physician you are aligned with the primary care physician and the primary care physician knows you that yes, Khalid is there and he will help me whenever I will call him or I will text a message or whatever means and his, his or his team is there. So they will be they confident enough that they will refer to you there. So they are afraid that they may lose their, uh, lose their patient while referring to you because you are the master of that or the, you are the champion of the diabetic foot. So what, what you're, you will tell them that no, I will treat the problems and then I will refer you back so that you can do the dressing and offloading and all Excellent. take care of the patient. So that's Excellent. how it, it, it may work. Excellent, thank you so much. So we have a question in the chat box. Uh, can either speaker comment on the M health application for DSMES. Is that a common uh, health application that is used in the region? Uh, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Uh, what we are, uh, I think, uh, I think that this part is from my, uh, the mobile app which we, are, uh, we have developed now. And this is only for Pakistan, which we have developed for the foot care only. I don't know about that one. So, right. uh, no, and, and the same um, participant is saying, I think that Dr. Uh, Khaled stated prevention is key. And if we make the best use of technology and maintaining the sustained impact through well-designed action plan to develop M health application within telehealth. So I think it's it's a comment to uh, encourage leveraging technology. Um, yes, within... I definitely agree with I, I agree with that. Except that we're our population who are diabetic and who have diabetic foot problems or disease are still a little bit older. So maybe in the next ten years, uh, or maybe their children can help with the technology. 
But as of now, we're still having to do it uh, the old way, word of mouth meetings and things like that. But yes, I think in the future, a little bit of technology is going to go very far. I think there was a paper published uh, a few years back that the hospital and health, H, in, H uh, uh, which is the use of actually the telemedicine or the, the WhatsApp and whatever, uh, the, uh, the medium, uh, to, uh, to connect the patient with their doctors or the podiatrist or whatever the diabetic foot care resistant to help them at their, their home. This is one of, and they, they have shown that they 21% of decrease in the number of the foot ulceration and et cetera. So yes, it works actually. And there are a number of papers which we have, we have publication are there, which shows the effectiveness of the use of the telemedicine in this regard as well. Thank you. And then there's another good comment uh, in the chat box regarding thanking uh, both presenters for the brilliant presentations and looking at ways that we can jointly collaborate on similar research. And that is something certainly that the board of directors will look at connecting all of us to support more of uh, the research work. Thank you. All right, uh, William, back on to you and Dr. Halaby. Thank you, Dr. Mariam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zahid and Dr. Khalid for uh, very nice presentations. And uh, now I think we can invite uh, Dr. Bashir Tarazi from Palestine and Dr. Salma Khuraybat from Kuwait to chair the second session uh, where we will have three speeches from middle, moderate and low uh, diabetes prevalence countries in the MENA region. Dr. Salma and Dr. Bashir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Mariam and Dr. William. Dr. Bashir, please go ahead. No, go, ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, good evening, everybody, uh, or good morning to some of you, and uh, thank you very much for organizing this meeting, and it is uh, really a privilege to be part of the um, panel's uh, uh, <coughs> and talking about a very uh, important issue, as you may see uh, when Dr. Khaled and Dr. Zahid is, is talking, they are really expressing what we are really facing, and uh, it's a big challenge for us, and uh, the coming talks, I think it will tell more and more. And, and I think we all share the same uh, uh, feelings toward the diabetic foot and things have, has to work really, uh, to go on very much uh, forward. And uh, I just, uh, I always wonder where are the diabetologists among us? Maybe Dr. Hanan with exception is a diabetologist here. So we need more diabetologists to be involved so we can talk about the prevention in diabetic food more and including the primary health care. This is just a point of view. And uh, thank you again. And uh, let's hear what we have. Thank you very much. Dr. Bashir, please, the floor is yours. No, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Salma. Thank you for everybody. Now I have to present uh, actually Professor Hanan, uh, well known to us and to everybody, to speak about prevalence of diabetes and diabetic foot management in Egypt. Please, Professor Hanan, you are most welcome. Thank you so much, Doctor, for this introduction. And I'm going directly to my uh, presentation because of time. Uh, uh, this is actually not my agenda. This is Dr. Jamil's agenda because he has told us one, two, three to talk about it, and I'm going to uh, uh, comply with this. About the diabetes prevalence in uh, in uh, Egypt, we are here. We are the same uh, percentage of more than uh, twelve percent, like Egypt, like Sudan, like Saudi Arabia. So um, by the IDF Atlas Year 2021. Uh, we were told by the estimate of the IDF Atlas to have 11 uh, million diabetic patients in Egypt. And I think as we I have tested today, the current population of Egypt on the Egyptian clock, which it tells us day after day, now we are uh, more than uh, uh, 100 and around 108 millions 
and by 2021, we were less than 100. So I think the next month, the IDF Atlas is going to tell us the true number. But as percentage, we, we are in the 10th position across the world from the top 10 countries. And what's very bad that we are going to keep this position most probably in the coming years because of uh, lack of uh, national uh, program to prevent diabetes in Egypt. Uh, about the amputation statistics, uh, we, there is no registry for amputation in Egypt. And the amputation is done by different specialities, general surgeon, vascular surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, anyone. And it could be done also in the general hospital or in the private sector. And there is no country data, only some centers data. Each center can tell if he is doing well or not by having his own uh, center uh, data of amputation. And one of my dream actually is to have the legislation they have in the United Arab Emirates that there is no amputation to be done across the country without a second opinion. And I hope because if there is a second opinion, the number of amputation in Egypt is going to be decreased. It's, it's usually done without indication or higher than needed. Uh, searching the amputation rate uh, because of diabetes in Egypt, I have found a lot of uh, work on affecting <coughs> amputation. For example, certain dressing with amputation, how to diagnose the uh, prevalence of uh, centers, uh, adjuvant therapies, uh, and its effect on the amputation. But only one paper has mentioned the prevalence of major amputation in Egypt. And by luck, I found them from Mansoura, but I don't know them actually because they are working since long time in United States. What they have done, they have compared Mansoura amputation rates and projected the number by an epidemiologist with them as a co-author in the paper and compared them to uh, Yale School in uh, United States. And they found that the amputation prevalence since uh, year 2009 and for five years has become down in Mansoura that to Egypt to be down. I'm very honored to be a part of this because we have been working on diabetic food year 2005 and we all feel that the number of amputation is less and the uh, uh, more distal is now happening amputation rather than major, but we do not have country uh, uh, data. So I am very honored that they have projected the number with their epidemiologists to be across Egypt. As regards the standard of care, I have actually find as usual when you search anything that the first podiatrist across the world was from the ancient Egyptian, which was for me actually very, very um, um, astonishing that we have evidence of a podiatrist uh, uh, on the tomb of Ankh Mahor and he, his feet has been cared off in this um, uh, tomb. And uh, to know that other similar evidence indicates that food care may have been quite common throughout ancient Egyptian, not only for the king, but also for the people. And this is very nice to have as a history for more than 5,000 years now, but it's very disappointing that we have as a country, a lack of dietary education until now, and it doesn't look in the future to, have, uh, to be promising. And uh, this has led me to search across the MENA region, and I found the MENA region is only having the only podiatry education across the MENA region is uh, from Gamet al University of Al Qarawiyin. They give baccalaureate in podiatry in uh, Morocco, and we have a lot of podiatrists and podiatric surgeons in the Gulf, as Dr. Khalid Idris and others are very well qualified in Western countries but only one uh, uh, baccalaureate of podiatry across the MENA region, and I hope to find the second one, hopefully in Egypt in a few years. The situation in Egypt is different from the World Diabetes Day 2005 because they uh, have searched a representative for the International Working Group of Diabetic Food to carry the uh, work of a whole year campaign. And in, in my opinion, this is, was one of the most successful campaigns because most of us have 
uh, reach the International Working Group of Diabetic Food and start working on the ground from year 2005. So before 2005, the situation in Egypt was, as Dr. Khalid mentioned, it was restricted to surgical clinic and the definition of diabetic food was very bad as a synonym to gangrene. But unlike some countries in Africa where we belong to, we belong both to MENA and to Africa, uh, some countries in Africa until now, they don't have vascular surgeons and they refer to pa their patients to countries where they have vascular surgeons. We are lucky in Egypt to have eminent vascular surgeons who are experts in limb salvage using revascularization or open bypass or different technique. They are very perfect. But foot clinic in a diabetes setting, like the uh, example uh, done in the Western country, which has proved efficacy, was not known in Egypt till uh, year 2005. And also the multidisciplinary approach where the whole team are working together was not known before uh, 20, uh, 2005. The International Working Group uh, Diabetic Food Structure of Food Care from minimal model to uh, intermediate model to center of excellence was not known to us. And when we have uh, joined the International Working Group, we knew as Egyptian that we do not have a problem with the uh, intermediate care. We have a lot of diabetologists, we have a lot of surgeons, we have infectious disease, we have everything in uh, this. but we have a problem with level one because we do not have general practitioner who are interested in screening and doing their job. We do not have podiatrists and we do not have diabetes or diabetic foot nurse. And we also have a problem with level three, which is the center for uh, referral or center of excellence. So we worked on both level, minimal model foot clinic to develop around us. And meanwhile, to develop our center to be a center of excellence. Knowing that we have more than 10 million diabetic patients who belongs to this first two step, I quote that from uh, David Armstrong, uh, patient with diabetes and neuropathy, more than 10 million people are living here. No one is considering them diabetic foot. To very small number here, about 10% of them. So we have only 1 million diabetic foot patients working, uh, uh, ascending this escalator from ulceration to infection, to vascular disease, to amputation. Who would care about the rest of the 10 millions here? This was our issue. And this is why we uploaded the step-by-step -step project, well known in the uh, MENA region and uh, in Africa. And we developed the 30 minimal model food clinic across Egypt. These were our first uh, primary care physician and diabetologist to cover the lack of podiatrists and the lack of diabetic foot nurse. Each team was from, uh, formed from a physician and a nurse. Of course, they were spread across the country as the uh, sponsor uh, mandate, but only two uh, places in Egypt, we were not able to find any uh, candidate for them. And by time now, from 2005 to, to 2022, not all these clinics are working, but the happy issue is that most of them have been developed from a minimal model food clinic to be intermediate food clinic. And one of them is around to be a center of excellence in Upper Egypt. According to the sponsor's need for, uh, from the World Beats Foundation, they asked us to do some awareness for the sponsors of the World Diabetes Foundation to know that um, the things are working in the country. And to my knowledge, this one was one of the best we have done. We were not aiming publicity, but we were doing that for step-by-step -step uh, recommendation by the World Diabetes Foundation. But after we were having each diabetic patient across the country asking, am I having diabetic food? Does this mean that I'm going to diabetic food and so on? And this is the best thing that has happened that our patients were aware that um, something bad is going to happen to their feet and they could, should ask about it. Today, I was to the website of the Egyptian Society of Diabetic Food, which we have formed with these 30 minimal foot uh, clinic at the start. Then we expanded them. And I found that the number of visitors to the website in Arabic is approaching 2 million. 
So that does mean that 2 million diabetic patients have seen the recommendation, the questions, and the um, what to do and not to do, because our website transformed to English for physician, and it is present in Arabic for our patients. And 2 million visitors for the diabetic food is something I'm very proud of. Back to the structure. By the time we developed this minimal model around us, we were working here as an intermediate uh, food clinic. Then we, we found ourselves suddenly as a referral center for this food clinic. So we and the university have to develop our clinic to be a center of excellence. And this has happened very fast because, because every, everything was working with us. And uh, the whole criteria of uh, being a center of excellence, according to the International Working Group, uh, were applied to our center very rapidly. All diabetic food services is done and are still working in our center and in most of these centers around us, and they are still referring to us. And since that time, actually, we didn't stop education of others, of patients, beside any um, the Congress for us, we usually have uh, some uh, uh, activity for the patients about the diabetic foot. Foot screening and risk categorization of the patient is usually done in each diabetes meeting now, before that foot was completely neglected in our meeting. The management of pre-ulcerative pathology, there is a lot of individuals now with primary care physician and, and uh, diabetologists who can manage the pre-ulcerative pathology. And only our clinics that are working now on diabetic foot ulcer, and even the therapeutic footwear and custom made insoles are uh, now present everywhere. And that was the first center until now we are the first to have plantar pressure measurements and custom made insole. So we are serving the whole country, and this has helped us uh, to introduce a service very cheap for our patients. Uh, together with some of uh, our pharmaceutical company, we have had a campaign uh, for awareness about peripheral arterial disease for the primary care physician and the diabetologist and even for the patients in Arabic. So I truly believe that more patients with peripheral arterial disease now are treated by diabetologists. And the, we have decreased the number of, uh, of uh, cases now for uh, our vascular surgeons. Uh, Acute Charcot has taken from us very uh, large effort because our center was overwhelmed with hundreds of patients with chronic Charcot. And now we are seeing more and more Acute Charcot referred from all centers because of uh, increased awareness about the value of diagnosing of Acute Charcot. And even the amputation and post-amputation care is uh, uh, given to our patients through these uh, clinics around us. And for the difficult cases, they consult us online. About the advanced wound management, which Dr. Jamil has asked me to stick to the agenda, the advanced wound management in Egypt is still a problematic, and I have a long talk on this with uh, Dr. Mariam. We do not have advanced wound care uh, specialist or wound care specialist in Egypt. Everyone can do this wound care until now. Nurses are doing it, physicians are doing it, surgeons and so on, but we do not have whether degree to have wound care management or specialist. But the good news is that searching the net on wound care in Egypt, I found that there is market research um, uh, publishing this month uh, a report saying that this country is potential for more investment in the field of uh, wound care. And, and thanks to the Egyptian, uh, country, uh, Egyptian uh, companies who uh, supplies us with a lot of uh, wound care products, which is stabilizing the market, the international companies are coming up and down with uh, the market and changing a lot of their local agent and withdrawn sometimes from the market, but the Egyptian companies are stabilizing the market for us. Uh, diabetic food research in Egypt is done and we do not have this problem because we have a lot of uh, support for research. The Egyptian Society of Diabetic Food supported research uh, when it is um, Egyptianized, I mean, when it is 
uh, trying to help an Egyptian problem, the university do, the Ministry of Higher Education too. So if you look at the PubMed from year 2005, with very less number of research to this year, uh, you are going to find that a lot of research has been done. Excuse me? Two, Two minutes. minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I give you three minutes. Okay, thank you. I'm going to finish before. Some good things are going to happen or I'm, I'm, I'm happening. I'm going to share with you. One of them is that all of loading modalities from removable cost worker to wedges to um, uh, therapeutic footwear, they are now covered in Egypt by the insurance. And last few months, uh, they, are uh, they are recently governed, uh, 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 sponsored by the governmental aid for those who do not have insurance. So if any Egyptian uh, physician is uh, attending this meeting, I would like them to uh, feel free to prescribe the uh, offloading they needed and have uh, for your patient if he is not having insurance. The next good news is that Professor Ahmad Taha, the chair of vascular surgery department in Cairo University has applied for um, a diabetic food diploma in Cairo, which is going to be multidisciplinary. And the good news is that when he received the, the uh, acceptance from the Ministry of Higher Education. All universities have the right to have it, copy and paste for all universities. So we are waiting for him. We did not do uh, the same effort to apply. And this is going to upgrade a lot of our primary care physician to develop uh, their knowledge. And the last good news we have that uh, in Mansoura University, we are starting to have a place where all uh, together with our surgeons, with our orthopedic, with the infection and with a whole team as multidisciplinary team are going to work together in one place. And the Mansoura University Authority is uh, putting us the rules, the responsibilities of each one in the team and how to uh, control because this is the first place who is going to have a multidisciplinary team from different branches working together in the same uh, place. So slowly but surely the bird builds its nest and I feel that we have done a lot for this country, although slower, but it's working. And in the last meeting of our Egyptian Society of Diabetic Foot last month, we were we were moving to uh, Aswan University. We are now moving to each governorate to try to recruit more uh, people interested in diabetic foot to come to our clinic later and to receive training. And we have succeeded to do that and the chair of the internal medicine department of Aswan University is willing to establish her first foot clinic in Aswan, as we were set to receive patients from Aswan to Mansoura, because this is very long distance for our uh, patients and very costly for them. So we are very uh, yani appreciating to her that she has become uh, in I'm not able to stop sharing. Dr. Jamil? Yes. So uh, I'll be talking about the management strategy and current situation of diabetic food. Uh, and not only in Lebanon, but also give a small glance about the Middle East. Uh, we have in the Middle East and North Africa 73 million adults that, who are living with diabetes. Uh, Lebanon, we have a prevalence of 8%, in Syria it's 15%. And we go up till 25 in Kuwait and 33 in Pakistan. One in seven live births is diabetic. And uh, we have the second highest rate of France, the highest adjusted mortality, and the prevalence among Arabs is around 20%. The prevalence of diabetes in Lebanon is between 8.9 and 
according to different studies. The most measurable parameter for success or failure is amputation rate. And we have three Ds, delay in seeking medical care, delay in referral to specialized care, and delay in initiating adequate management at all level, starting by investigation, vascular, effective antibiotics, and surgical procedures. The leading causes of amputation uh, differ between developed and developing countries. Peripheral arterial disease is the major cause of amputation in developed countries, whereas in developing countries, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, followed by peripheral arterial disease, trauma, and infection. The problem in our region of the world is, uh, was discovered by WHO, who estimated that in developing world, there are 40 million amputees and only 5% have prosthesis. A prosthetic limb costs between $125 uh, and more than $1,000, which is way above the annual income. Talking about amputations in Lebanon, uh, diabetes is the leading cause followed by vascular cause. Uh, nevertheless, the amputation rate is still low. Uh, we, have, we had in one study 660 amputation in, in, in a population of 3.7 million, which makes it around 1.7 per 10,000 population. So I will move to the management of diabetic foot who are the gatekeepers? General surgeon, vascular and orthopedic surgeon, endocrinologists sometimes interfere in minor cases of diabetic foot, GPs and ER physicians. Our problem is in the wound centers. We don't have any public wound center in Lebanon. And this is very sad if we hear what we have in Saudi Arabia or in Egypt, uh, I was very happy for uh, the Egypt presentation. In tertiary care institutions, we have two, and now we are starting to have a wound center in the third tertiary care. Individual private wound clinics, we have two, one in South Lebanon run by a GP, by a family doctor, and two in North Lebanon run by myself. We have uh, encountered very severe cases because our wound clinics are turning as if they were tertiary centers. The principles of diabetic foot management differ. Uh, if the patient starts with the wound clinic, it will be a fast track management, vascular infectious surgery, either initial surgery or after revascularization, if the case is called, and then uh, high standard wound care. Sometimes the patient starts elsewhere and is referred later, and many times is referred not later, is referred very late. So they start with either a home nurse, GP or ER physician or endocrinologist or orthopedic surgeon. The diabetic foot surgeon is a man with a mission avoiding preventable amputation, saving limbs to preserve the patient's autonomy and saving lives when life is under threat. We have many common surgical procedures. I will not stop on them. Initial and serial debridements are the most common procedures done in wound centers. In my clinic, I must read the wound, read the wound bed, which tells me about the presence of the wound read the exodus, which is the message of the wound, and read the peri-wound, which tells me about the future of this wound. When we read, we discover the, uh, what the wound needs. Now moving to the standard of care in Lebanon, not in wound uh, centers. First, diabetes control via insulinization of the patient, even if the blood sugar is controlled. Vascular assessment, we have duplex scan arteriography if no contraindication, 
And nowadays, even in renal failure patient, we have CO2 arteriography. Attempt at medical treatment, sometimes this causes delay if the patient is seen by a GP endocrinologist or a dermatologist, unless the presentation is catastrophic, and this is where they refer straight to either a surgeon or to a wound clinic. Regular to shy surgical debridement done by general or vascular surgeon. The problem is when the vascular surgeon notices that he cannot intervene, he recommends amputation. And I agree totally with the recommendation of no amputation without a second opinion. I strongly agree with this uh, recommendation. And it should be a legislation. Congratulations for uh, United Arab Emirates. And I hope that all our counters in the MENA region can follow the same track. Many times we have accelerated amputation decision by orthopedic and vascular surgeon. Classic wound care mainly by home nurses who are not always professional. We need more training for nurses. We need diabetes nurses. And many times the wound care is done by family members. I will not talk now about uh, wound care, high standard of care. I will go to next slides. In specialized wound centers, uh, what was not mentioned in Bridges' talk is weekly wound assessment and picture. Pictures are very important and we have standardized new devices to allow accurate uh, pictures of uh, wounds. Of course, we have mobile pictures and mobile applications, but we have also picture devices like uh, silhouette or molecularite. Normal saline-based cleaning, topical agents, secondary dressing, adequate footwear, uh, and serial debridements, and a serial classic triolab test, CBC, CRP, creatinine. And then we go to the advanced wound care, whether negative pressure wound therapy, that was not mentioned in other talks. I, I know I'm very much aware that it exists everywhere in many other countries. Platelet-rich plasma, I strongly recommend it, I, and I practice it since 20 years with excellent results. Amniotic membrane, dermal substitutes, uh, pulsed electromagnetic field, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is concerning wound measurements. We use either the ruler or the grid. The grid is inexpensive, and uh, it's a fast way to count intersections inside the diagram. Each uh, intersection goes for one centimeter square. We have the moleculite. Personally, I use the moleculite device, which uh, with the uh, ultraviolet, it shows me where we have in bacteria to allow debridements and uh, even sampling. And also it allows uh, measurements, wood measurement by centimeter square. And I do it once per week for all wounds to assess either progression or stagnation. And if there is stagnation in the wound, then I will move to another modality. Choice of secondary, uh, of primary and secondary dressing and topical agents should be tailored to individual wounds needs. And now I will share with you some uh, cases uh, very rapidly. Uh, this is necrosis and this is platelet-rich plasma followed by MEBO-based treatment that allows excellent regeneration, not healing by fibrosis. A very uh, severe Charcot case uh, with excellent granulation via negative pressure wound therapy. And later on, you can see, uh, later on, we are left after full epidermization with the original neuropathic ulcer and the patient is now on total contact cast. Another case, you can see the tibia and uh, extensor tendons. This is after negative pressure wound therapy. We have all the tenders cov uh, covered, but uh, the patient succumbed due to myocardial infarction. This is osteomyelitis of calcaneum, and I invite uh, more collaboration between us healthcare professionals, how to tackle calcaneal osteomyelitis. This is after surgical debridement. Then after negative pressure, we have regrowth and full granulation, as you see on the 
profile on the lateral view, we don't have the uh, defect. Integral uh, dermal substitute, then followed by skin grafting. This is a referred case by a vascular surgeon after a bypass to my wound center. It was a catastrophe, and uh, I don't know if it was a referral or it was meant to be a failure case. This is also the dehiscent bypass on uh, your left. This is after uh, amputation, minor amputation of four toes with good granulation after negative pressure wound therapy, skin graft, and the patient started ambulating. Uh, Platelet-rich plasma gives excellent results, even in refractory cases, and I strongly recommend it, especially when the wound, when the ulceration is near a bone uh, prominence. Total contact cast is uh, of common practice in Lebanon, and it gives excellent patient and doctor satisfaction. Negative pressure is still a standard of care in cavitary wound. The problem is financial. We are having a financial crisis in Lebanon and not all patients can uh, have access. This is a uh, open heart patient who had uh, dehiscence. He was very nicely managed. Breast cancer case also, sh she had a tram flap infected and we, it could be salvaged. Here you can see there was a space to introduce a hand over the ribs full of pus and fibrin, and it was managed also by negative pressure. Here I did only one toe amputation, and there was a gas gangrene of the extensors, followed by excellent result. This foot to the left was a bag of pus from the toe till the medial malleolus. Also negative pressure wound therapy followed by dermal substitute, the Integra on the left. Then after the Integra was skin graft and the patient uh, walked out. This is pulse electromagnetic field. It decreases pain and allows some vasodilatation in cases that are non-revascularizable. So the strategy to win the fight is adequate initial surgery, tissue culture, adequate initial empiric therapy, then de-escalate, teamwork, insulinize the patient, vasodilate, and treat the whole patient, not a hole in the patient. There is always a way in the worst uh, cases and in the worst financial crisis, like the one we are passing through in Lebanon. Healing is a mixture of art, science, passion, and tools. And what I believe that in the 21st century, there should be no more place for non-healing wounds if caregivers turn into wound healers. Let us all pray for the whole world, pray for our Middle East and North Africa region, and pray for having no more wars in the whole globe. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jamil. It's amazing talk and uh, cases and service. Uh, really uh, astonished with the, with the, in spite of the difficulties you're facing there in your country. And uh, amazing job, uh, Dr. Jamil. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Salma. Thank you, Dr. Bashir. And we are uh, now. The next talk will also uh, will be in a, a country that is facing a lot of crisis and a lot of difficulties. That's why we, I, I, in the program, I prefer to leave these two presentations till the end. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I just invite uh, Dr. Marianne Boutros really okay. to share us with her talk. Please proceed. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bashir. I don't have a talk. It's time for us to open it up to Dr. Halaby to give his uh, closing remarks while, uh, you know, and, and do some comments on, on this part of the program. So I suggest, okay, if it is so, please let me, because I was not really a speaker and I did not really get, you know, uh, the five speakers to be as a, a chair person. Let me just put you in the picture about Palestine and just to have really a picture about not West Bank, not Jerusalem, 
but the crisis where Gaza is really uh, suffering. Actually, we have uh, really no services about diabetic foot services at all. And this is really by the time uh, Dr. Uh, Pro, uh, Mr. Bennett Pelt Nelson now is really visiting Gaza for the first time. And he is going to establish services among the Danish really uh, experience. But let me tell you about the prevalence rate about Gaza and uh, the Gaza Strip that we have actually 2 million and 200,000 inhabitants, where the estimate prevalence rate of diabetes is 20% and above. But what about foot care? It's really uh, the number of annual admissions cases that suffer from complications of diabetic foot is really more than 500 cases annually, in addition to advanced cases that need amputation, representing six to 8% of the cases admitted to the diabetic foot department. So the visit really is organized by the advisor to the specialized committees in the general administration of hospitals. This belongs to the Minister of Health, which is a good sign that the Ministry of Health is really ready to provide and to uh, implement a service for diabetic foot in hospital to prevent amputation with the aim of developing diabetic foot services in the hospitals in the ministry. This is really, I don't want to go for really this really topic because Gaza needs assistance, really has support. And maybe by Dr. Hanan, Dr. Mohammed Sharkawi, is in Egypt, it's easy really to handle, to, to have capacity building actually, to have really more trained, really doctors. Egypt is really, is not far from us and easy to, and maybe we have to discuss how to help these people who are suffering socioeconomic, depression, all kind of really miserable life. So I don't want to talk more because everybody knows about this fact. And I hope our you know, seminar will really get you know, to help these people all over the, those who have crisis. Thank you very much. So Dr. Jamil, please, can you summarize? I'm yes, sorry that I take just three minutes about, you know. No, no. You have, you have a cause and we all support your cause. So uh, five minutes are very little for such a noble cause. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so at the end of uh, our uh, webinar, I tend to thank all of you and uh, the, I... few points, the few points <laughs> I uh, gathered uh, are the following. First, if we can create, if we can at uh, a country level, each country, if we can create a society for diabetic food, it would be an excellent start. It has been like this in many Arab countries, but it's not the case in all Arab and North uh, Africa. Create a registry for diabetic, for diabetes and for amputations. And uh, then the third point is to establish podiatry curriculum, mainly for physical therapists as a start or as a different specialty, as a, a real specialty. Initiate a diabetic food course in medical schools and in nursing schools to have diabetes nurses. Educate primary care center teams. We, we have in all our countries in the MENA region, primary health care centers, like what we call dispensaries. We have to educate these primary care center teams, whether doctors or nurses, about two things. First, to screen, and this is inspired by Dr. Zahid talk, to screen diabetic patients for diabetic food. And second, to refer, to refer diabetic feet towards specialized center. And this is also inspired by what uh, was mentioned as fast track pathway. This is a very well known pathway of diabetic foot recommended by Diabetic Foot International. So education in two uh, directions, screening and referral, fast track referral. 
the uh, sixth point is funds. As was mentioned just now by Dr. Bashir Tarazi, and I think also I, uh, was alluded at by Dr. Abdul Raza, but who could not continue his speech for technical reasons. And also what I am suffering here from in Lebanon is financial crisis. And I think if we can work all together to, to find funds to help people to save limbs and save lives. And finally, the legislation that was mentioned, no amputation without a second opinion. I think uh, this is the wrap up of uh, our webinar talking, uh, taking uh, samples from each talk, starting by Dr. Zahid and finishing by Dr. Bashir and Dr. Abdul Raza. And you, I have taken you. very close notes. I will uh, pass the information back to the board of directors of DFOOT. Certainly, we, we have to look at some global alignments yes. and strategically pick one or two initiatives that we want to work together as a global network to advance this, but certainly DFOOT is very committed to doing that. And the MENA sure. region is certainly doing a lot of great work. So thank you so much for all of your contribution. And Dr. Abdel Razak, the audience is very interested in what you have to say. So maybe we can coordinate something to send out your presentation post this event. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Halaby, for all the great work and your leadership amongst the group. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Thank you, thank you very much. See you thank all you. later. See you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.